What's up, everybody? Happy Tuesday. Bobby Fly back with my man, Sheets, Eric Sheets Haber. We are going to be going through a FanDuel uh, lineup build. Let's do it, man. Um, I feel like we got a pretty good handle on the slate after the DraftKings video we just did. And uh, first off the bat, who is is there an automatic guy who you feel like you want to plug in over here versus DraftKings, or maybe you just want to plug in on both sites? Yeah, so um, fortunately or unfortunately, or whatever it is, um, two guys that stand out to me on FanDuel – um, as opposed to DraftKings, is one is going to be is going to be Devonte Graham at at this price. It's uh, seems like I, I hate to use the word misprice or whatever it is, but a sixty four hundred is against the Knicks is kind of kind of ridiculous. He's going to be fifty percent owned probably, but he's 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 a guy I'm having a tough time getting away from him. Um, going to have a tough time getting away from Zion also actually um, at sixty two hundred, although he has again he has a hard minutes limit. It's hard to play him in GPPs, as I've discussed, but just as a straight value, he's, he's kind of rough to get away from, as far as I'm concerned. But what, what I did is, again, like, like usual, I, I put together just kind of like plays in here that are – all these guys are probably, probably going to be pretty chalky, actually. But we'll, um, we'll go through position by position, and I do have a couple of pivots and a couple of ways that we can go to, to, to be different on FanDuel. Well, like you, I first plugged in uh, – I, I have Graham. I plugged in Garland over here. I like him a lot over here. Um, I like Siakam a little bit better over here um, as a small forward spot. But I also really like Will Barton, who you have in there. Anyway, but mostly we'll, we'll go position by position. But I just uh, – I do think it's interesting. We came up with sort of similar things. That I'm curious to see if people – I think it's going to happen again where people just don't play Garland. Um, he's 4K now, man. Like, we're going to start off with point guard and – I'm just going to say, like, I think that <laughs> at 4K, I'm definitely willing to go there. So he's in my first build. But I love the – I mean, there's a lot of good point guard options. Kemba's price is reasonable. Kemba, Kemba and Lowry, you know, uh, John ja Morant in the middle is interesting. But I find myself continually going to Luka and then down to Garland. Um, but I also could make a good argument for Sexton. I think you could play Sexton and Garland, especially if Porter ends up being out. Uh, I like the stack of that New Orleans game better over here than I do on DraftKings. So with me, with me on point guard, um, I agree with you that the, that Luca is, I mean, Luca's just the best play. I mean, he's always the best play. And and uh, until he gets priced up uh, on Fanduel with the, with the with the positional requirements, he's it's kind of be tough. It's going to be tough to not play him. But you could definitely not play him. I mean, he's not like a lock or anything like that. No, there's other guys. He certainly looks to be like a pretty <laughs> like a really good play. But he rates to be pretty high owned also. The um. One guy that I, I, I would piggyback off of that you said was, was Kemba. And part of it is going to be because there's kind of a, kind of a weirdly owned run back. Uh, we'll get to a shooting guard. For whatever reason, they have Butler like less than 10% or something like that on FanDuel. And I, I can't see it. But if that's actually the case, then for me, that's kind of easy for me. I, um, think, I think the great reason for Kemba is that he's going to be unowned over here, which is – just kind of really? weird for a guy who just put up, you know, yeah, I really do. I don't see how people get to him. I, I think they build differently. They're going to play a lot of Rubio, assuming that he plays. They're going to play a lot of uh, Lowry, a lot of a lot of Luca. Uh, I think Terry Rozier is going to get a lot of love at 6.1. Yeah, so so here's what I got. I got two for you. Okay, I got two for your consideration. Um, one is going to be uh, someone I alluded to on DraftKings, but he's a little cheaper here and he's – going to be just as low owned is, is Ben Simmons um, at 9,800. Um, he's the first guy I would kind of pivot to in that, like if I didn't want to pay all the way up for Luca, but still want to eat up salary and make yourself feel uncomfortable, you know, and don't go to Trey Young, for example, which I know some people are going to want to do. Um, I think Ben Simmons would be kind of a really low owned spot. And the other one, and this is, again, this is a guy I never play, but because of, of you know, we talked about this on DraftKings, but I don't know if you like him as much on FanDuel or whatever. But you want to try a $5,800 Eric Bledsoe at point guard um, yeah. in that Washington game. I think that could be kind of a fun way to go. Um, and that could be a, de a decent low owned uh, alternative to some of these other things. Like if you want to play Beal, for example, and didn't want to like have to play Giannis or whatever it is, but you want to get a little bit of something from that game, Bledsoe looks to be pretty cheap at $5,800. And, um, yeah. and he's somebody I would try. In a vacuum, he makes sense to me. But when I try and think about him versus Terry Rozier or Colin Sexton, who are basically in the same, you know, within $200 and $300 respectively, yeah. you're going to get a guarantee of almost 10 more minutes. That's <laughs> now, true. 
um, from those guys. Like, it's not like Bledsoe has this minute ceiling um, that these other guys do. He pretty much has been over 31. What has he been there once this year? Um, so I, I would lean the other guys, but I certainly, and I also think that he'll get some love. I think he's a great matchup. Okay. For him. I would prefer to personally to play Sexton or Rozier over him. And I'm, I'm probably going to stick with this Garland, Garland, uh, you know, my main is going to be Garland and Doncic, and then I can always switch it up and play Kemba and Lowry and, and mix it up other ways if I want to. But I, I don't think Garland is going to end up being that high owned, and it's just so easy for him to, to crush that price tag in a great matchup. What I will say is that I think it's easier to fade Lowry on FanDuel just because of the different options um, mm -hmm. over here. Yeah, I agree. Um, um, I also think Monty Morris had I – mean, I don't want to ooh. name too many guys, but he's definitely a guy who could – like at 4.9, it's probably he's, – he's more interesting to me over here than he is on DraftKings. Um, finally coming out that really big game, really good matchup for him in Memphis. 4.9 is a good price. And, again, like that, you could play him and Ja in the backcourt uh, as one little mini stacking thing there. I, I really think the point guard position is strong as usual, and I think we can go a lot of different ways. We have to wait to hear about the Miami news and all that. But I, and I agree with you about the Ben Simmons. Hey, nobody's going to play Ben Simmons. And I don't think that many people are going to play Trey Young either. So you can definitely play either of those guys. But right. you know where my priorities are. At shooting guard, we kind of alluded to this before, but, but Devontae Graham is um, – it's, you know, it's tough, tough to not play him at 6,400. Let's just say that. He's going to project well. He's going to play the minutes, and he's got a good matchup. And for, for all of those reasons, um, he's, uh, he's just a really, really good play. Tough to fade, and he's got tournament upside. Also, it's it's very it's 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 really tough to to get away from him. Uh, the other high owned guys are going to be uh, guys I, I guess I like a little bit, like Drew Holiday, and I guess Herder's okay. Uh, I don't not, I don't care about Herder too much, but but I like I like Drew Holiday. But the guy again, you know, if uh, first of all you get the Miami news you want, uh, you could play Her uh, Hero again at forty three hundred. Do you want to do that? And I don't know where this ownerships are coming from, but if, if Butler is really just unowned somehow or less than 15% owned, I, I, I can't, ima can't imagine not playing him. I mean, he's, um, as you mentioned in the previous uh, show on DraftKings, I mean, he actually does pretty well in back-to-backs, and he uh, only played 30 minutes last night, and uh, he's actually probably my, my, going to be my top play alongside with Graham here, I think. I love it because it's contrarian, so I think that's a good way to go. Um, with him, obviously, Graham is going to be probably the jockey's play on the slate, but I, I'm, I'm, I don't want to necessarily avoid him because of that. Um, I'm leaning a little bit more towards a different route of playing Graham and, and either Huerter, DeLon Wright, um, somebody like that, sort of paying down a little bit over here just because I like some of the other positions better. But I like the, the Russell I, – I like the Butler idea. Um, I don't think I'm going to get to D'Angelo Russell. I do want to point out he's had some big games against Philly in the past for some reason. I don't really know what that's all about. Um, it's just, it's just odd, uh, but he has. And, uh, like, depending on what happens with Miami, Tyler Harrow could become a, a great play. You know, I don't, I don't know. It's just it's worth considering. We have to wait to see what happens there. And then the guy who I don't like on DraftKings as much, but I feel a little bit more okay, because we named some plays that we like here at this position, but I don't love this position overall for, like, incredible pivots. Um, I kind of like Fred Van Vliet over here at 75 if you're not going to play. Because I, I like the point guard position so much, I don't find myself getting to much Lowry. So I find myself looking a little bit more at Van Fleet or Siakam over here where the prices are good and the positions are a little bit weaker than on DraftKings where you can – where it's more flexible. Do you like Beal on uh, FanDuel? So I do, but I, I'm so locked into him on, on DraftKings that I just haven't uh, decided if I want to make the full play him and everything because I think he's a I – mean, I think he's a great play. Like, you know what I mean? I don't know what to say. Like, um, but, it, you know, that game is, a, is, a, is something to worry about. Uh, I'd be more inclined if I played Beal on, on FanDuel to try and run back Giannis than I would be on DraftKings. Yeah, that makes sense. Um, and, and same thing, by the way. Uh, unfortunately, the shooting guard, I have a similar type of idea um, that you're going to, I guess, hate for the same reason you hated the other one, is, is maybe go to Chris Middleton. Go to who? To Chris Middleton. Yeah, I mean, it's probably not for me, but I get it. Like, it's a good matchup. Um, it's all fine. Again, I, I'm not, like, as in love with this position. I got you. So I, I, I prefer I, – I really like Herter. Like, I think that he's, a, he's, he's the Atlanta guy. If you're going to play some of, the, some of those Toronto guys who are going to be chalky that you want to run back. And he'll have some ownership, but he's 4.9. He's pretty safe for that price. 
I prefer him over DeLon Wright, but I do think DeLon, DeLon Wright is a really interesting contrarian play. Yeah. All right, so you want to move on, small forward? Yeah. Yep. So small forward, I, I originally, I mean, the, the three guys that are getting the most ownership, I suppose, are going to be, I guess, Siakam, Jalen Brown, maybe Will Barton. I, I originally put Will Barton in here, but screw him. You know what I mean? I'm, I'm kind of with you um, in that, in that, what has he done for us? I mean, like, he's just, just, just made our lives difficult. I, I don't know. Maybe if I were going to run it back with someone on Memphis, maybe I'll try it. But um, I don't know if I necessarily have to do it. I would love to be able to just to play Siakam, though. Um, I think he's in a really, really good spot. And if, of all the chalk, I don't know, man. Maybe, maybe Brown is just as good as Siakam as far as chalk goes. Yeah, I don't know. So, so, see, what's weird is I think Brown will be a lot higher owned on DraftKings. Because I think so? people play on FanDuel. I think people are going to pick, and it's strictly a projections thing, which I disagree with, by the way. They're going to pick Thibel over Brown. Thibel? Yeah. Even with the Embiid back? If Embiid's back. If Embiid's not back. Okay. I don't you know, can, actually, though. You like, you like this guy, Thibel? I don't think I've ever played him. Oh, I mean, in general, I'm obsessed with his game. He's like one of the best oh, really? players I've ever seen in my life. But he doesn't – he's not – doesn't do much offensively, although he's actually shot the three pretty well this year, like medium, like better than we would have thought. But uh, he's got a future for sure. It's just uh, – he, he's going to get you there with steals. And, like, that. he's also a better play over here for that reason. I mean, people look at his – it's not like his steal log is, is a coincidence. Five, two, four, one, two, two. I mean, he, he, he – but his stocks are six, two, seven, three, four, three. Like, he gets them every game. And when you get those three time points, you get seven of those. You're at 21 fantasy points on FanDuel you can do almost nothing else and, and pay off. So I think people are going to look at it that way. I think Thibault is going to be the play that's a little more popular, but maybe I'm wrong. You know who's certainly a better play on FanDuel than on DraftKings is Gordon Hayward. Gordon Hayward, the other one, yeah, definitely much better play over here. Um, can benefit, you know, you could, you could make an argument that maybe he's the better play on, on FanDuel, whereas Kemba might be the better play on DraftKings, um, for one, because of the three-point bonus. Also, the position scarcity again. Um, I don't love, again, I don't love this position as much. Like, I can make arguments for Marcus Morris guys or Gordon Hayward, but I mostly am sticking to just the, the normal guys over here, and that's going to be. So you say the, say the normal guys. Yeah, we, we, we completely neglected the top scorer by, like, 15 points the position, right? So so what do, what do you do with Giannis here? Well, yeah, no, that's what I'm saying. Well, I mean, you, oh. you, you can decide. Oh, well, I don't think we talked about him at all. Okay. Yeah, 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 just because I feel like it's an, like, okay, for me it's an implied, like, I think where I play Giannis, I'll play Beal or somebody from that side still. But I don't think you necessarily need to. His price is reasonable enough over here. Um, I just find my builds going the other way. It's easy to get him. I, if I can get him in Luka. I just really like these middle-tier guys. And, oh, the other guy I didn't mention who's a predictable one. And, yeah, maybe this hinges a little bit more on whether or not he plays or not. But I don't mind, like, I don't know how he keeps ending up in my builds because he's not a guy who stood out to start the day. But uh, Tobias Harris at 7,400. Absolutely. Definitely Absolutely. in play. And, and along with Kelly Oubre. I mean, I mean, we're naming just guys now, but the priorities for me are still the, the chalky ones in Siakam, Jalen Brown, Will Barton, even though I, he's hurt us. And, uh, and then, if, you know, if you want to get creative, again, I can go back to that Miles Bridges argument. But I, I think that Tobias Harris is a great player. I, I don't think he's that much. I, I really don't think he's that much worse than Siakam. Um, I don't, I, 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 again, I, if you get him at 10% ownership and Siakam at 30 or whatever it is, I, I totally would try this one. I don't know. I don't yeah, think it's not that bad. But, but what's funny is that, I mean, I, you, you were just talking about having being able to fit Luka and, and Giannis in. And I, I, my initial builds and, and kind of leans is to not have either of them. So it's kind of it's really interesting. I think it's really yeah. interesting the way you go with this. I think, I think that, yeah, there, it is definitely uh, something to consider. But, I, I mean, all I have to do is take Siakam and Harris and turn them into, you know, Giannis and – but let's see, who do we have at 4,100 over here? I mean, Anna Newby would not be the ideal one. I guess I don't really like the 4,100 price thing, but that's how you can, you can sort of fit it. And then you're playing Garland at 4K and where at 49. It's not that hard for me to get him in. Yeah. Okay. All right. Um, power forward. So, 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 so power forward, um, uh, I just uh, – two things about power forward. Number one is that um, – Zion just looks rough, man. He just, at this price, he looks rough. He's probably going to be chalky, too. Yeah. Um, the chalk, I mean, it's, you, you'll get some ownership of like a lot of different guys, but I think Zion is definitely going to take a decent amount of ownership. And um, it's just such not my type of guy to play because of the minutes, because he doesn't have unlimited minutes. But 
I think I think I'm just gonna end up there, and I'm just gonna just lose. You know what I mean? I think I think that's what's gonna end up happening. Well, you don't necessarily um, lose. I mean, what's weird is so. I don't know if I should really talk about this thing, but there are certain sites now that are predicting the chances of people crushing their percentage, their value. Um, and Zion rates to be right near the top of that today. So it's another thing just to like, and those things are not coming, not to say those things well, are coming. Well, I was gonna, I was gonna talk about that, that metric, um, if, if only if you gave me permission to. Um, yeah. Because it's, it's um, I mean, I think, I think there's, a, there's some, there's a, a, a lot of that logic is flawed, sort of. I mean, like, mm -hmm. you don't wanna know what percentage of the time it, it beats that score by 0 0.01 points. I wanna know how much, I want a chance to really beat it. You know, I want a chance to, you want to call it, you know, a smash thing. Whatever. I want it, I, I want, I want eight X, you know what I mean? I want to, I want to, I'm, I'm more interested in that stuff than, than the chances that it, that it, it, you know, just eclipses a, a certain implied value. But again, all, all inputs are, are, are useful, I suppose. But, um, but yeah, the thing about Zion again is, um, I just think the matchup is so freaking good mm -hmm. and, um, they've lost a bunch of games, right? They've lost some. I mean, I mean they've, they've been playing some tough teams, but they've got to win games. They're, they have win games eventually, and uh, you're going to need to. This rotation is going to be pretty tight, I think. But okay, but with that said, I mean, he's not like a lock, right? But, but so, yeah. so he, he's a guy I'm put, I'm putting in. Uh, Julius Randle for me is is you know he always tries. He always has a lot of you know it takes. Charlotte has nobody that can guard the rim, and he likes to take it to the rim. So I, I, Julius Randle is obviously in a good spot, and he's pretty. You know, I presume he's pretty chalky also. You know, what we're going to have to talk about the same thing we almost talked about on DraftKings is why guys like Porzingis, like, look good. Um, I don't understand exactly why, but um, he I looks fine. Think, I, mean, I don't think I would play Porzingis over here because you can just jump up to play Kevin Love at 200 more, which I would prefer. I guess so. That's my personal take. Yeah, this, this position is a little annoying to me. Um, yeah. Maybe yeah. – uh, uh, I don't know, 10% Tice? Oh, that's gross. You know what I mean? Like, I, yeah. I honestly don't know what I want to do here. I might end up – probably Randall would be the safest of them all. You know what I mean? Like, I know he's going to get 36 minutes in a, in, a, in a – unless there's some wild blowout somehow in a pick -em game against a team that really doesn't guard him his position really well. So he's probably the safest guy. Um, the, of all these point of all these power forwards, I guess. I really like Randall too. Um, I also like Love though, and I also like. Uh, so here's I think that the really smart, savvy play over here is Michael Porter Jr. Um, mm. Michael Porter Jr.'s price over here is not where it should be, just based on his production, and uh, he's not like he's playing a million minutes, but he's such a good athlete and all around player that can get you there so many ways. You feel like a matchup against Memphis, especially because they're like his peers, basically, because everybody on that team is like 20 years old. Um, just feels like a spot where he could really dominate. And he's 5,300, where, where everyone was like locking him in at this price a week ago. And he hasn't really done anything to shy us away from him. So if, the fact that I don't love the position so much, uh, why not play a guy like Michael Porter Jr.? Again, probably a similar minute to, to Zion, but maybe you play both those guys together. You get your 28-minute ceilings out of both of them, and you end up with, you know, a combined 9,500 fantasy points or something. It's completely in the realm of possibility. So I like Michael Porter Jr. as an off-the-board play. No, that's, that's a freaking lock. That, that's awesome because I'm telling you, because this, this is what you need. Like, like, like I'm looking at power forward, and everybody I look at is like this, this whatever. You know what I mean? And, and I, I, didn't even, I didn't even scroll down that far. Mm -hmm. You know, in my in my list of ownership, as far as like Michael Porter Jr. and like you said, I mean, he was like I don't know what his price was recently, but it's pretty high. And people were playing him, and and he is it is a really good matchup. And I will say this: if he scores fifty fantasy points, I honestly would not even I don't say wouldn't blink, but I would say okay, that makes sense. You know what I mean? Like yeah. Yeah. He, he's oh he's flashed that type of upside, and and um, I think that's a, that's a tremendous idea. Yeah, and, and I, I just don't see people, people going there. So I, I really like that one, too. I, I think the power four position is, is weird. I'm not, I'm not like – it's not like a really exciting one, but I do think everyone's like priced at a reasonable enough price, including – like I'm not going to play John Collins, but his price is reasonable enough. Um, I do think Bam you could make an argument for also. Uh, I, I didn't find myself playing him because I sort of like the Randall-Love uh, combination uh, with Zion, but I, I, I don't – I definitely might want to get a little bit of Bam because – 
I like some of the Boston guys. Bam should be able to destroy a really weak front line. Um, and he's, he just he feels a little too cheap over here, especially with his shot blocking steal upside. All right. So I guess finishing up. So at center, I, my favorite, my favorite play, my, my favorite play ownership aside is unfortunately the, the one who's probably going to be the highest owned. Um, and that's uh, Aiton. I think it's, it's a good combination of price and upside and all that stuff that I think he rates to be my favorite play, but I certainly don't think that he's a lock by any stretch. So I could talk about other ways you could go. And one of the ways you could go, I don't know if you're going to be interested in this, two guys, if you want to get, pay down for center, I'll talk about that. But if you wanted to pay up a little more, a little more, if you want to pay up a lot more and go to Jokic, you got to figure out a way to make it work. But I certainly think that that's possible. If Embiid plays, I think that you can play Embiid also. Um, but the two ones I want to ask you about are, are kind of cheaper. One, I know that you've recommended before sometimes. I mean, you know this guy better than everybody is Marcus Gasol. And the other one who, you know, if you want to go down even more is we can go to freaking Mitchell Robinson at 4,600. So those are the guys that I'm looking at at center. Yeah, I, like I like Gasol in general tonight, but I also worry a little bit about the pace getting played out of the game and potentially getting more surge minutes. So that's just want to throw that out there. But I do have Gasol as, as a guy. Uh, hmm. I, I like Aiton as well, uh, but I think that Gasol, I'm going to stick, I think, and in, in gamble at my center spot. So I'm going to play a combination of Gasol, Mitchell Robinson, and Damian Jones. Damian Jones is becoming my favorite one, which is all based on the recent news that Bruno Fernando is out tonight. Um, we have a limited front line now for Atlanta against a team that at least is going to play fairly big. Now, John Collins can slide over and play some five, but not against Gasol. So it really depends on how the game kind of flows. But I think that uh, – I think Damian Jones is the sneaky play. I don't know how much people are going to be on him when they probably announce him as a starter, or if they do. But uh, that's a route I'm willing to take a chance on. There's upside on those 23 minutes. And uh, I think it's kind of an interesting, complete spend all the way down. I know yeah. it's not exciting, guys. I know it's a weird one. But if, you're, yeah. if you find your lineup somewhat chalky – um, that could be an interesting route to go. Also, if you want to pay up for everybody, you could just play Damian Jones. He's, you know, minimum cost over here. I don't know. I'm, I'm kind of, uh, I'm, I'm kind of in Embiid. <laughs> I, I like the Embiid call too. Like, I mean, if he plays like at 9K, that makes a lot of sense. You know, he plays. I mean, he plays and he's comes at 9K and Willie Cauley Stein. These other guys have to go. I don't know, man. It could be. Uh, could be a 70 ball. I don't know. We'll see. We'll see. Yeah, I, I kind of hear you. And even if he plays only 28 minutes, it's possible. Like, we could have the all uh, limited minutes team. <laughs> yeah, I, I have to say that um, the, the, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try to make different builds with uh, getting those studs in, getting, getting Luca and Giannis in. But I have to say that I haven't been too blown away by, by some of the value that we've discussed. You know what I mean? Sure. Like, um, I mean, Garland's good. You know, Garland's fine. You know what I mean? But but once you start up to go multiple 4K guys and multiple 4,100 guys. Yeah, when you start talking about Damian Jones, I understand it. But I'm just throwing it out there. No, that's, no, no, that's fine. But I'm just yeah. saying that we've been spoiled in the last, like, you know, several slates where you have your choice of these 3,800 guys that you could play. Oh, do you play Deadman or do you play Pirtle? Or do you play this guy? Or do you play this guy? Or we don't have to play this 3,600 guy because this 3,700 guy is just as good. We're to don't really just have that luxury. So – you know, it's kind. Of, it's going to be hard for me to get to those, um, to get to those Giannis's and um, and Lucas, given given one the fact there's some good mid range stuff out here, mm -hmm. and number two that there's it's kind of hard to to pay down for anybody. I think I sort of like some of the, the pay downs a little bit. I like being speculative with the, with some of these guys, but I get where you're coming from. Um, yeah. I, I I finding myself like. I, I, I still feel like point guard is the strongest position over here. So I'm probably going to just keep mixing a lot of similar cores. And, that, you know, those are going to be guys like Siakam, Harris, Zion, Kevin Love, Julius Randle, um, some combination of the 5K, sub-5K centers. Um, uh, you know, Devontae Graham, Kevin Herter. That's sort of like – and then sort of mixing around my point guard spot a little bit. I will definitely say this also, by the way. All right, again, if you do play Zion Williamson and if he is chalky, 
you're just not allowed to complain. You know what I mean? If he doesn't get the minutes that you think he's going to get, okay? You, you just, you're just not allowed. You know that they're bringing this guy back slow, and they – like, what's his name? Was it Gentry? He's the coach of New Orleans, right? So, so Gentry was like, was, like, losing his mind trying to get him out of that game, you know, when he was, like, going off that. He was, like, just panicked almost to get him out of that game. So, you know, it's, it's one thing the last couple of days to speculate at 4% ownership, you know, whatever he was. Um, but if he does end up being really chalky and you do play him, and if he only gets 21 minutes or something like that, or if, you know, if you see, like, the coach, like, pulling him out of the game, you, I don't want to hear all the hate mail, like, not the hate mail, just Gentry sucks, Gentry sucks, Gentry this, this, that's the other thing. You know that they're bringing him back slow. And and do I think he might get 28 minutes like people are projecting? Sure. But like you said, at 25, 30% ownership, uh, you know, I'm not saying don't play him, but you're just not allowed to complain. You know what I mean? Uh, when, when, if, he doesn't, if he doesn't get the minutes that's needed to get like 35 fantasy points is what, you, is what you're kind of looking for. I totally agree. Well said. All right. Anything else? I think that's it, uh, pretty much. Yeah, hit us up on Twitter, YouTube, anywhere. To, uh, we'll, we'll give you our thoughts of, you know, any late-breaking news, all that stuff. I'll be doing a live show around 6 Eastern time on our YouTube channel, so please check that out. Guys, and I will, so and, and I will say, I'll say this really, really quick, again, just yeah. for those who do the FanDuel thing. Um, again, uh, yeah, we'll talk about this some other time, but we, we are going to just drop, do something in the next couple of weeks, maybe sooner than that with um, asking for maybe some charitable donations or something like that, if you like what you see, as we kind of just ramp up into the next phase of this. Um, you know, we are hoping we're providing something different from you guys. Some of our, our, our approaches might be different than, you know, the normal content providers where you just get the 20 chalk plays of the day. I mean, how, where else are you going to go to have someone, like, deliver content in a freaking jacket? You know what I mean? In a suit jacket. That doesn't happen all too often. So uh, no, not since the siege days. Oh, really? Siege used to do that? Used to wear a suit. Yeah, he's, uh, well, you know, he's, he was, he was one, he was one of my, he's one of my favorites. So good for him. <laughs> he's a funny one. All right, guys. Hey, thanks so much for tuning in. Sheets, thanks for doing the show. Guys, we'll talk to you later. Good luck today. We'll see you at the top of the leaderboards.